Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with you all on this Wednesday, a hump day edition of Locked On Pelicans. We've got one that's got a theme through all three segments show. The Pelicans are looking towards the future. They want to get into the playoffs and they have a lot of success. Are there blueprints out there for them to follow? And I think there's a couple of different team building directions that they could go. And we're going to focus on those over the next couple of days, unless we get some coaching search news right in the middle of everything. But we're going to try and cover how the Pelicans can build a winner using teams that were in the conference finals. And today we're going to start with the Atlanta Hawks. We'll look at the Phoenix Suns too, and the Milwaukee Bucks, because the Pelicans conceivably could go any number of directions with this as I hit the mic. But I want to take a look at the Hawks because... Frankly, they were the most surprising team this past year. They're a team that everyone maybe is going to look at on how to exactly build your franchise up when you have the main core pieces in place. Trey Young in Atlanta, Zion Williamson here. So we're going to get into all of that, how they went about this and how the Pelicans can emulate all of that in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Today's show is brought to you by Spotify Greenroom. Um, download the app. Join me this week, Wednesday. It's today, actually, to get in on the action. Spotify Greenroom, changing the way we talk sports. So don't forget also subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts from here Monday through Friday for y'all only show putting out five days worth of Pelicans coverage and talk every single week. And we're now on YouTube. So please subscribe to the show on YouTube. Um, just search locked on Pelican. So let's get into it. The Atlanta Hawks, the really surprising Atlanta Hawks. I think this is a team that severely underachieved last year and seemed kind of desperate to get into the playoffs and made a couple of big free agent moves this past off season that were a little bit head scratching at the time. And look, they got off to a bad start. This is a team that did finish fifth in the Western in the Eastern Conference at 41 and 31. But at one point, they were not nearly that good. And they were, it was 14 and 20 before they fired their head coach, Lloyd Pierce. So how did they end up from last season, including the, the tumultuous start to this year that they have, to end up in the conference finals, going to six games against the Milwaukee Bucks? You know, at least winning a couple of those, losing the series, but le being, you know, in prime position going forward to be thought of as a contender. So they finished the year in a really good spot, but this has been kind of years in the making for this team. And that's why I start to see some parallels between the way that they built and the way that the Pelicans could build their team to hopefully be in the conference finals, looking at a berth in the NBA finals. They, they got it right in the first place. They have the core guy on their team in Trey Young. You've also got to look at this team in a way that they've really built through the draft. There's some similarities here because while the Pelicans have made a trade that brought in some talent in Brandon Ingram, maybe one of the other core pieces on this, they had some lottery luck in landing the number one overall pick and getting Zion Williamson. Past that, based on the number of draft picks they have where they're kind of sitting in the, in the draft lottery right now, You've got to kind of build that direction, I think, a little bit more so potentially to try and emulate what the Hawks did. The Hawks never got lucky in the draft. They never jumped up and moved up to number one or anything like that. They've just made smart moves in the draft to kind of get the guys that they want. They nailed the coaching decision in Nate McMillan after they fired Lord Pierce, but they'd already had some insurance there, right? They brought Nate McMillan to be the lead assistant on the staff, knowing that Lloyd Pierce was maybe not the best uh, guy to lead this team. So they had some insurance in that. It's worked out remarkably well, but I'd be willing to bet in the interviews with him, they knew that he's maybe changed a little bit as a head coach. And it's been a lot of time this past off season after being fired from Indiana and despite having 700 career wins and a great playoff streak and respect from people around the league, learned that he'd grown knowing that he could connect with some of the guys on the roster, just like what the Pelicans are looking to try and do. 
all of that, I see a lot of similarities there between what they've done and what New Orleans is looking to do because they've kind of nailed it. Like you look at them and they look like they might have a better young core than the Pelicans do. And that's really saying something when you have Brandon Ingram and then Zion Williamson on this team. Zion, by the way, it was his birthday yesterday. He's now allowed to legally drink at bars. Just is finally able to walk into the boot and order a a drink at the bar by himself and not have someone else do it for him, or at least do it legally by himself. They probably were still going to serve him there. So the Hawks have kind of done it the same way. They had the core guy in Trey Young. So what did they do right to build around him? And turn a team that's you know really disappointed the past couple of years into something that I don't know if you'd even call it overachieving making the conference finals about this Bucks team. So we're going to get into that coming up. Coming up next is what they did right. And the third segment is where are the parallels between the Pelicans. What do the Pelicans need to do? So that's coming up here next on today's edition of Locked On Pelicans. But before we get to that, this episode is brought to you by Green Room. Spotify Green Room, formerly Locker Room, is the first social audio platform made for sports fans. The app is free to download. And once you're in, you can talk with me, other fans, athletes, and insiders in real time about your favorite team or sport. And I host rooms for Locked On Pelicans every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central. Yes, you can finally join in on the conversation you listen to here every single day. Green Room is the perfect place to start or join conversations about the league. You're going to find fans just like you on Green Room for watch parties, debates, post-game breakdowns, and of course, reacting to the biggest news or rumors. Plus, you have a chance to chat with me and might even be featured on Locked On Pelicans through our Green Room conversation. So be sure to join me today, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central. I'll be hosting these green rooms where it's interactive. It's like sports talk radio on demand. I get to hear what you have to say. I have questions for all of you. You can ask your questions for me. It's not like you just watching or listening to the show. It's very different. I love how interactive it is. So go download the free green room app now, currently available on all iOS devices and on Android and beta form. Be sure to create a profile, link your Twitter, and join the NBA group for the latest league updates. You can follow me. It's at Nola Jake to be notified when my room goes live. Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Central. I can't hear can't wait to hear everyone's thoughts on the coaching search the draft everything pelicans related i will see you there today 6 p.m central over at green room changing the way we talk sports so we're continuing the conversation about how the pelicans can try and rebuild like the atlanta hawks did to get into the playoff and not just get in but have like a great run the first time they're in there which is what atlanta did making it to the conference finals losing in six games to the milwaukee bucks it's pretty good all things considered for their first time in the playoffs it, you know, probably 4-2 wasn't as close as that series really was. The Bucks kind of threw some things away there. But the fact that they took two games off Milwaukee, who made it to the finals, who has you have Giannis, even though he's injured for part of it, I thought was unbelievably impressive. So what have the Hawks done that's worked out well in their favor? Well, the first thing is, after having the core guy in Trey Young, They haven't missed on a draft pick. They haven't missed on a draft pick since 2016, pretty much. Here's the number of where these guys were drafted. John Collins, 2017, 19th overall. Trey Young, number five overall, 2018. And also 2018, they drafted Kevin Herter at 19 overall. They drafted Omari Spellman at 30 in 2018. That's the one miss that they've had. But he's kind of inconsequential when you're hitting on so many of these draft picks. DeAndre Hunter, number four, 2019. That was the trade with the Pelicans, right? Cam Reddish, number 10, 2019. That one's worked out too. And then last year, and this was maybe the most surprising one that we saw in the postseason, Onyeka Okongwu, number six overall. All of those guys, except for Spellman, contribute to this team in a variety of different ways. But here's where the Hawks have somewhat of a unique draft strategy, right? For rebuilding teams, it's often thought about acquiring as much as get all the talent you can on the team, right? Do you have best player available? Don't worry about fit. Don't worry about position. Just get the talent, in. get the best talent you can in and you figure it out all later. But you end up with a mismatch team sometimes with that, right? When you have your core pieces, it's not so much about just putting talent on the team and figure it out later. When you have the core pieces in Trey Young and say Zion Williamson in particular, You need to build around those guys, not just throwing things out there. Look at what the Philadelphia 76ers have done. They have Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, two guys that do not complement each other at all. And there's a reason they keep disappointing, because those two are actively making life harder for one another. But you look at the Atlanta Hawks, who don't really care about drafting best player available, right? They want talent that fits 
what they're doing. Their GM, Travis Schlenk, has a background in scouting. They scout the draft religiously. They know exactly who these players are. And then they're willing to move around in the draft to get the guys that they want. DeAndre Hunter at four is maybe a bit of a reach, but they knew he would fit what they were building. They knew the type of player that he could be, the complimentary type of player that he could be, and they just went out and got him. They're fine trading down and trading back if it also means they can get the guy that they want. And it seems to have worked. They're not just throwing talent out there and hoping that they can figure it out. There's a specific team building goal in mind, a team kind of plan in mind, and they're going and specifically getting the guys that they think fill that. If the Pelicans at 10 are faced with a variety of options, they might just take best talent available. It might be a guy like Josh Giddy, who I like, or Alperin Shingun, but those guys aren't going to contribute right away. And you don't know long term if a guy like Shingun is going to be able to fit alongside Zion and Williamson. The Hawks wouldn't draft that type of player. They would draft the guy that they know fits that's also going to have a high hit rate. They're not going for very many boom or bust kind of guys. They are just getting solid basketball players that are going to work out that complement Trey Young and the other guys already on the roster. It's a bit of a safe way to go about it, but they don't need to hit home runs with a lot of their draft picks. They just need to get enough out of those guys that they're good, solid pieces, and they've kind of taken the draft as a team-building approach, not just simply getting the best player on there, and we'll figure out the fit later, even if there's some overlap or anything like that. They've never really taken another point guard like Trey Young because they don't need to do that. It's a little bit refreshing when people really want to go with just best player available, get the most talent on the team. It's kind of the opposite of like the tank and team building that you're taught. Just get, you know, talent on here. You're throwing enough mud at the wall that you hope some of it will stick and the mud that does stick hopefully blossoms into an all NBA guy. But there's something to be said for just drafting solid NBA players that fit what you're doing. And I think the Hawks have clearly shown that that can definitely work. They've also nailed it in free agency. This past year, we kind of made fun of them for signing Gallinari and Bogdanovich, right? They contributed like $130 million to those two guys. It was a lot. But those are solid free agents that play minutes, contribute where they need to contribute. They're not long-term pieces, but they fit right now, and they allow the young guys to kind of learn their role and develop on the right timeline, while also not meaning that you know, you're sacrificing wins, You're kind of straddling both the development line and the win now line. And it's worked. And I think that's great. Also, one thing they've done really well is they prioritized a lot of size and athleticism, particularly on the wing. And this comes from Jonathan uh, T. Jarks' article over at The Ringer where he really broke down their rebuild, right? They have so many guys that are huge on the wing. It lets them hide Trey Young defensively. Because those guys can cover and guard in multiple positions. So they've placed an emphasis on defense and size allowing them to do that. And I think that can be a pretty important thing to look at, particularly for a team like the Pelicans, who haven't been great defensively. Maybe adding some more size there can really kind of cover up some of this. So it allows them to hide Trey Young. It also creates mismatch issues when teams try and play small against them that if you switch a bigger wing or someone onto Trey Young to try and guard them, you're at a disadvantage in another position because there's a size and height mismatch there. It's just overall Really impressive and really smart team building, I think. And clearly, it paid off as they made it pretty deep into the conference finals here last season. So that's where they've got things right. Not a lot of luck working out for them. Just solid drafting, solid scouting, having a plan in place and knowing what they wanted to do and going out and kind of executing that if you're the front office. It's been pretty great. And getting the right head coach that kind of fits all of that. So how do the Pelicans emulate this? And are they already doing some of that? Are they kind of already on this Hawks path? Because to a degree, I think they are. And that's what we're going to look at coming up here next in today's edition of Locked on Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar out there. I've told you about all the great flavors that they have, but they also have limited time flavors, including the Built Grasshopper Cookie Bar. It's available only this week, July 6th through the 9th. It's a new flavor, Grasshopper Cookie. It's basically like a Thin Mint. This is the Built Bar version of the Thin Mint Cookie. All of the flavor without 
all of that sugar. It's only 150 calories, 17 grams of protein, and just five grams of sugar. These things are absolutely delicious. They sent me a sample box of these. I love these. My girlfriend loved these. I gave these out on that bachelor party I've told you all about. They all loved it. You've got to give, if you're going to try like one of the special flavors, the grasshopper cookie is absolutely the way to go. But look, Built Bar has other delicious flavors, coconut, sea, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, and German chocolate cake. I love the grasshopper cookie. I love the mint brownie. I love the double chocolate. I love the salted caramel. All of these are delicious. And if you don't know which one you want to try, you can always get a mixed box where you're going to get two of each of the nine flavors. So not only are they the best tasting, they're healthy too. Again, 17 to 18 grams of protein, calories ranging from 130 to 180, only four to five grams of sugar, only four to five grams of net carbs, all the amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy. So order today and get the grasshopper cookie or raspberry or whatever it is you like. Go to builtbar.com, sorry, built.com. Use promo code locked on and you're going to get 15% off your next order. Again, that is promo code locked, sorry, it's locked 15 for 15% off over at builtbar.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by BetOnline.ag. BetOnline, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. Baseball season's in full swing. The NBA Finals are going on. It's a great time to make these games a whole lot more interesting. Plus, you can get all the latest news, odds, and info for any sport you want, including MLB, NBA, NHL, and all your UFC, MMA action. So before game two, Go to betonline.ag on your laptop or mobile device and check out all the great news, sign-up bonuses, and contest information to make a couple of quick, easy dollars with your sports knowledge. So head to the website, use your mobile device to sign up today, receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit when you use promo code locked on over at betonline.ag, bet your online sportsbook experts. So today's episode of Locked On Pelicans also brought to you by Michelob Ultra. It's the road to the finals, our NBA finals coverage brought to you by Michelob Ultra. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. And at 2.6 carbs and 95 calories, we can all enjoy the games a little bit more this season. I'm recording this at halftime of game one. That was a really fun half. I don't think I've been this excited for the NBA Finals in a really, really long time, whether it's just the fact that we get two new teams in there, new stars kind of rising up. I was pretty hyped for this in the first half, lived up to it. I'm about, as soon as I'm done recording this, going to go back to watching the game, and I'm hopeful that the second half is going to live up to it as well. Man, it's been really fun so far. I've really enjoyed these playoffs. Usually I'm burnt out at the end of the season. I don't really care to watch basketball anymore or anything like that. I'm almost energized. I was so excited to watch game one and I'm really looking forward to this hopefully being a pretty epic series. Okay. So we're talking Atlanta Hawks and how the Pelicans can emulate it. We kind of went over the overview of the Hawks in the first segment. We went over some of the specifics of what they've alien draft picks, smart free agents and decision, all of that. There was a plan in place and they just kind of went out and made sure they were going to stick to their plan. Building a team, not accumulating talent. There's a difference between those two things. So how do the Pelicans try and become the next Atlanta Hawks? Well, the good news is they've got the core in place, right? You've got Zion Williamson. Just like the Hawks have Trey Young, there's Zion Williamson here and to a lesser extent, Brandon Ingram. Your core is already in place. And I don't care what anyone says. Those two guys complement each other. You don't need me to go over the, the Brandon Ingram numbers again. They absolutely complement each other. So now you've just got to do the rest of it. The biggest part is finding that main guy to build around. That's why OKC isn't going this route yet. They don't have that guy necessarily unless you think SGA is. But the Pelicans have the core pieces in place. And I actually think Griff has done a good job of kind of building similarly, similarly to what the Hawks have done so far through the draft and getting the guys that you want, trading back from four with the Hawks, ironically, to get both Jackson Hayes and Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Got two guys he thinks fit alongside Zion Williamson. Jackson Hayes looks like a springy big that gobbles up offensive rebounds and can go up and throw down lobs from Zion or anyone else on the court. He's a vertical spacing threat. That is a useful guy to have and someone that does space the court, albeit vertically, for Zion Williamson. Nikhil, if his three-point shot ever becomes consistent, that's the shooter, one of the shooters you need around him who should have good size to defend multiple positions, and he's a pretty good defender already, on the perimeter. You got a lot of that already in place. Maybe Kyra Lewis Jr. turns into that starting point guard for the team, a guy with speed that's aggressive and likes to get downhill. They've done a good job of this. The question is, what other pieces are they going to look to add? If they stay at 10, 
You might not like drafting Corey Kispert because he doesn't have the highest ceiling, but he fits exactly what the Pelicans need. He's a three-point shooter that's stout defensively with good size. It's It would be the Hawks pick, right? You could go with Shengun, you could go Giddy, but this is the guy that kind of fits what you're building around Zion. Think if the Pelicans were at two. You've got Cade Cunningham going one. Would you draft Jalen Green or Jalen Suggs next? Jalen Green's probably the better prospect. But is a guy with a high usage rate like that exactly what you need on this team? Or would you go with maybe more, more of the sure thing in Jalen Suggs who also fits what you're doing? Because you need to turn this from a collection of talent to a team. Would Jalen Green fit seamlessly in? Help you win more and more basketball games next year? Or does Jalen Suggs do it? I think Suggs does. And I think that's something the Pelicans really, really need to consider. And look, maybe they think they can get that guy later in this draft. As we mentioned, the Hawks are happy to trade up, trade down to go and get the guy that they want. I gave you the list of some of the names that the Pelicans are trying to work out right now that we've seen so far. They look like maybe they're trading back a little bit. Maybe they're willing to move back, get future assets too, but also still get the guy that they want and not force something to 10. I do think the Pelicans are kind of going down this path of what the Atlanta Hawks have done already. The big thing is you need to hit on the impactful free agents and let's call it other, other teams players. JJ Redick didn't work out. Steve Adams doesn't really fit and make sense for what this team is trying to do in the collection of talent that you have on it. In theory, Eric Bledsoe should have worked out, but, well, we know how that went. So you need to hit on impactful free agents that actively contribute in positive ways for the team while taking up just enough minutes and allowing those young guys to kind of grow into their roles. You could do that. This team could turn their fortunes around, draft a guy that makes an impact right away, sign one or two free agents. The core of the team's in place. Get some more shooting around here. Guys that fit next to Zion and BI a little bit better. And I think you're kind of there. I don't think it takes, you know, anything huge. You could retool the roster, I think. But there's also, you've got the main stuff in place. Maybe it means you need to find a center that can start instead of Steven Adams and before for for half a season before Jackson Hayes is probably ready for that role. Maybe you need another guard that's just a consistent three-point shot. You probably need some more depth on the wing, particularly at size that shoots threes. Corey Kispert, anybody? All of this is available for New Orleans and things that they can do. So I don't actually think they're that far off of the Hawks model because they've already done a lot of it. You've just got to see those guys pan out and that's what they're supposed to start to do in their third season, particularly Jax and Nikhil. And if they do that, they're looking at a bit of a Hawks trajectory. It will be Zion's third year next year. It was Trey Young's third year when he made this deep on in. If those other guys start to take a leap, yeah, I actually feel kind of good about where this team can be, particularly since it looks like they're trying to hire a head coach that's similar to Nate McMillan. Nate McMillan, former player, went right into coaching after, didn't wait too long there, was kind of coach established people, got the chance, got fired, learned from that, moved on, and has become a pretty damn good head coach, right? Willie Green fits that bill. Being able to kind of adapt there's because he's been there and seems to have like the right type of mindset that it's not his way or the highway, and we don't need to get in all the Stan Van Gogh came out yesterday. I need a break from that. I don't think New Orleans is that from this. So when you lay out how the Hawks did this rebuild, New Orleans is like halfway there. That makes me more optimistic than I've been in a while for what next season will look like. So we'll also, later in the week, assuming we get no coaching news, talk about how they could maybe build like the Suns. They could build like the Milwaukee Bucks because there's a blueprint and a pattern there too that New Orleans could follow. They're kind of at a crossroads, I think, where they could go any number of directions and it's a good spot to be in. So we'll look at also those two teams and how they could end up like either of them and the ways that they went about building their title contending teams. But that's going to do it for today's edition of Locked on Pelicans. Don't forget, subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe on YouTube. Just search Locked on Pelicans or check my Twitter at Nola Jake. Please tell your friends about the show. Get them clued into this, whether it's on YouTube or the podcast. Leave a five-star review with a comment on iTunes, wherever you get your podcast. That takes like 30 seconds and makes a world a world of difference in helping promote the show and keeping this free in five days a week for you all. No one else coming to you like this, talking about all things New Orleans Pelicans. So thank you all very, very much for listening. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, and I'll be back with you all tomorrow.